This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 2301 statics. It's the second part of a video about moment of inertia. We're going to cover some examples where we do moment of inertia by integration. Uh, we've talked in the first part of the video about the basic concepts of moment of inertia. And then we're going to use those here in these examples to solve some problems. Okay, the first important example is in the textbook, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, but it's in the textbook section 8.1.2, example 8.1, solves for the centroidal moment of inertia of a rectangle. And Dr. Norville in the book does that, and he solves for, if a rectangle is dimensions B, wide and h tall the centroidal moment of inertia about its own centroid x prime axis is bh cubed over 12 just use his calculus to do that similarly i have this y prime axis passing through the centroid and the moment of inertia about that using these dimensions b and h is b cubed h over 12 Obviously, if I turn the thing 90 degrees, it's really the same thing. Where B is the width parallel to the X, whatever axis it is. In this case, B is parallel to X prime. So it's that B times the H distance, which is perpendicular to the axis you're taking moments of inertia about. Anyway, it's a very important number or formula to remember. BH cubed over 12 and how it's applied. Okay, another important number that we're going to use for some of these integration problems, or parts of them, is the moment of inertia of a rectangle about its base, an axis passing through its base. So I've got the same rectangle, height of H, width of B, and I'm going to use a little vertical stri horizontal strip, kind of like we used when we were doing centroids. And I can get the area of this rectangle by integrating this little strip DA over the height H. So that's what I'm going to do here. And so DA is equal to X, which is the width of the rectangle times dy, the height of it, and if I integrate that thing over, if I plug in, x is always equal to b in this equation, because it's just a straight line here, so the integral, dA is equal to b dy. Obviously, if I integrate that, take the integral of that, I'm going to get bh for the area. I'll let you do that on your own if you don't believe me. Then the important thing is I want to take the moment of inertia about the x-axis of this rectangle where the x-axis is on its base. So I use the parallel axis theorem which we talked about last video which is moment of inertia about another axis is the centroidal moment of inertia ix prime, and in this case the the integral of the derivative of it, plus the integral of the y av squared term, or in this case a dy, where y is equal to, or dy is equal to y, square that times dA. I want to integrate that from 0 along the y-axis to h. So, first I need to observe that the integral of dIx prime is from this equation the centroidal moment of inertia of that rectangle is b dy squared where dy is the height okay but dy is an infinitesimally small number goes to zero so this whole expression goes to zero so I'm left with I, ix just equal to the integral of y squared b dy, where b dy is the dA. So I do the math 
Uh, y squared times B dy is just the integral of that's Y cubed B over 3 evaluated from 0 to H along the Y axis. So that works out to be BH cubed over 3. So that's the moment of inertia of a, shape, a rectangle about its own base axis passing through there. I can also see that if I rotate my axes 90 degrees that IY is just going to be equal to B cubed H over 3 which is similar to this example up here. I think this is in the textbook. So the, the moment of inertia of a rectangle about an axis on its side is B cubed H over 3. Okay, so let's go do a couple of examples. First we're going to integrate, we're going to get the moment of inertia about the x and the y axis of this triangle of height 200 oriented like this, base is 80 inches. Okay, I need, a, I need an equation for the slope of this line. Well, slope of a line is y equals m, or the equation for a line is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, it's the change in y over the change in x y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, they just plug in x2 is 200 minus 0, x2 is 80 minus 0, so that work means the slope is 2.5. b is the y-intercept, so my slope for my, my equation for my line is just y is equal to 2.5x, so I've written that over here. Now I want to take this little vertical strip and call that dA, and its dimensions are dx wide at the base, and it's y tall. So I want to get the area first just by integrating that. Integral of dA is equal to the integral of y dx, because that's what dA is. Substitute in the expression for y is equal to 2.5x. I get the integral from 0 to 80, because I'm integrating along the x-axis with respect to dx. 2.5x dx. That works out to be that for the integral. Evaluation. Plug in 0, I get 0. Plug in 80, I get 8,000. And that happens to be what I know about a triangle. It's 1 half base times height. So I just check it with that. Okay, the moment of inertia about the x-axis is this dix. The integral of that. Okay, what is that? Well, that's the moment of inertia, or that's this uh, little rectangle that's y tall, dx wide. So the, the ix of that, moment of inertia about this x-axis, is just that bh cubed that I derived up here. So it's the integral of bh cubed over 3, where b, the base, is this dx number the derivative, and h is y, and I cube it, and then I divide by 3 from this equation up here. So the moment of inertia of any rectangle about its base is bh cubed over 3. So I've just plugged in the numbers that I know from my formula, bring the 1 third out of the integral, and then substitute in for y what it is, 2.5x, cube it, do the integration of that, and I get 15.625, which is 2.5 cubed, divided by 3, divided by 4 for this integral, times x to the fourth. Evaluate that from 0 at 0 at 80, it's 53.3, repeating 10 to the sixth inches to the fourth. So, I wise. I'm going to figure it a little bit differently. I don't have a rectangle bounded by the y-axis, so I've got to just use the... Um, so I'm using the parallel axis theorem, but the moment of inertia about its own centroid, y prime centroid axis, is zero because the height is dx that's what I cube, and so that's zero, so that term goes to zero. So all I'm left with is the AD squared term. In this case, A is DA, and D is this DX distance, 
which is always just whatever the x value of this rectangle is. So I substitute in what I know. It's equal to x squared y dx, which that's what a is from up here. It's equal to the integral of x squared times substitute in 2.5x for y. Bring it down here and keep on evaluating it. 2.5x cubed, just combining those terms. Evaluate that as an integral from 0 to 80. I get 2.5x to the 4th over 4. Evaluate it as 0 and 80, and I get 25.6 times 10 to the 6th inches to the 4th. Now, I didn't do it, but I could get the radius of gyration there.